So um, here we have the chassis. Um, we have a standard uh, Dean's T plug. Um, my tail's a bit wiggly. Check that out. Woo! Anyways, uh, not very stable around here. Um, speaking of stability, uh, the frame does have some flex to it. Um, actually, a fair amount of flex. I would I would definitely want to make that a lot more rigid. You can see that the the rear the rear frame support here is uh, uh, just one bar, um, not a lot. There's there's nothing up through here or yeah. So that the frame needs to be stiffened up. Um, another nice part about this truck is that uh, it comes with bead locks. And these, I believe, are the SLW uh, bolt pattern in here. Um, and these are licensed method wheels. Uh, so it's it's uh, it's cool looking. It looks good. Yeah. So we have um, the bumpers are super flimsy. There. I mean, they. And if you look at look at this bumper here I mean it hangs down quite a bit this is a front bumper um, quite a bit below the the chassis um, I was kind of it's kind of kind of nice that their the front of their chassis actually doesn't come down very far another thing I am excited about is where the chassis lines up with the front tire so I can put like some TSLs on here some of the XLs and it'll actually bring this out a little more um, so when I come I can come up straight on a wall and it'll hit tires before the frame and be able to walk up that wall and that, it's something I was really disappointed in when uh, when Axial went to the SCX-10 II um, they moved all this back which did move all their weight forward above the axle but um, it made that approach noticeably for me um, uh, that it, it didn't quite work out. Since this bar right here is straight across instead of curved, um, if you wanted to, you could move the axle, drill a couple holes a little, a little further, just slide all this whole assembly forward and be able to move your axle um, kind of where you want, which you, it's a lot harder to do on the, uh, the SCX-10 II just because of that arc that these are bolted onto, that your hoops are bolted onto. The CVDs on here feel pretty sloppy. That's that's not real great. Look at that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm finding as I go through this truck, um, although I do love Associated and I love them getting into the game, there are some things that that just seems like they they cheaped out on things like like here I'll show you here this right here the the top mount let's see if I can get this to focus it's a garbage camera see how wiggly that is you can see the ring in relation to here you can see it's just wiggling up and down that's that's just poor quality um, I mean there's some things we can do about that and that's not a deal breaker it's it's a uh, just something I noticed so now when I'm going through the truck I'm looking at at things like you know how how loose is the wheel you know is is it set well is everything just sloppy you know there's there's a fair amount of wiggle in that tire and they all have wiggle you know everything has some play in it but this is this is quite a bit of play doesn't feel like they they crossed all their T's or dotted all their I's um, on the little stuff I mean it's still cool it's gonna be fine as far as usability I'm just a little disappointed but there still are great things about this I mean out of the gate you have a decent amount of flex and all the shocks uh, max out in all directions it's, I don't need any more flex than that that's about perfect um, I, I guess I could use a little more, but not not a lot. Um, yeah. It, but one of the nice, great things about this is that everything clears. Um, all your links, your links don't hit each other. They're they're not hitting the chassis. They're not hitting the drive shaft. 
um, the uh, like on an SEX 10-2 um, when you go to look let's see if we get you a good shot here so when you go up this way with an SEX 10-2 um, it hits the uh, the pan hard bar hits the uh, the servo horn and when you go the other direction um, it can hit the the top of the pumpkin um, and so it's I mean this clears in all directions they, they did a really great job of just clearance for everything I mean you have enough clearance to get yourself some more flex with a droop kit or um, you know if, if you wanted to and it'll it won't be a problem you won't be trying to figure out well how do I get a bent link in here so they're not hitting each other or uh, you know just just trying to Mickey Mouse things around to get it to work this chassis is going to work as is um, so it's that's that's probably the biggest seller to me is just just everything has ample clearance in there but yeah these bumpers will definitely go away um, me personally I don't run bumpers I hate bumpers uh, they're always in the way so you know for me the bumpers will go away anyways but as far as quality these bumpers are really garbage uh, yeah garbage is probably the right word <laughs> these are not good uh, yeah so anyways the uh, the pumpkins are actually a really nice size uh, they're pretty small they do both look they both are clocked a little bit on the on the axles. Um, if you're not familiar with that term, we used to do it on the original SCX-10 all the time because the drive shafts would hang up on things. Um, and clocking means that we just twisted the axle by putting a little bit shorter lower links or a little bit longer upper link, and that that twists it so that the uh, the drive shaft um, or the where the yoke is right there that it brings it twists it up. Um, so that it's not on a flat plane with the ground and um, some of you are saying right now yeah that causes binding in the drive shaft and you're absolutely right but we we did it anyways back in the day and uh, and I, I don't foresee a real problem with them now um, but it is something to consider and look at and it, it is interesting that they went ahead and did that um, the approach angle on these on these differentials on the pumpkin here it, it's actually quite nice it doesn't look like it'll hang up it has a nice uh, 45 degree on the front of it and then with the clocking of the axle it even brings it a little little sl more sloped I think that's gonna slide on the rocks really nice I think that's a good design I like it I think this is gonna be my new comp rig just from what I'm looking at I I think it has what it takes um, to be very, very good. Um, I'm currently using an SEX 10 2 but I, I think, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna think I'm gonna give this one a whirl. Stiffen up the chassis some, get rid of the bumpers, put on some better tires. I might rock these tires for a little bit just to see what they'll do. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm gonna. They, they actually feel pretty decent. It does have uh, universal joints in the front axles. I don't know if we can. Get a get a good picture of them. This garbage camera. Sorry, you guys. Garbage camera, garbage light. Hey, <laughs> all right. Um, so it does have universals, which is really awesome for an RTR. Steering actually looks really good. Maybe even a little more than 45. That that looks pretty good. Looks like even under steering. It's uh, missing the link. It's not hitting the shock. And they they really did a great job with clearance in this truck. Put this guy in. Get the wires out of the way. Throwing in a stubby pack, hard hard case. Um, I'm probably going to figure out something different for when I actually compete with it. Um, maybe not. I mean, this, this is really not a bad system here other than some numpy didn't get the battery in all the way that's me hang on hang on there we go there we go that looks better all right there we go 
I don't see a on off switch on this thing and me personally I am okay with that um, just know that when you plug it in it's gonna be powered up so have your radio on because um, the the biggest problem with ESC's generally is that the switch goes out and then it stops working then you gotta cut it and solder it together and this just cuts all that out and so we went straight for the the hard wire so I, I like that actually so let's put this in I'm gonna plug in this plug into I might as well keep the color straight let's put it into the black and red here Ta -da. all right plugging that guy in and I'm gonna figure out a way to tuck this wire so it's not gonna dangle out the bottom I'll do that later so that's another annoying thing about having the wire go from the chassis to the body is um, uh, the uh, you know you have to have it long enough so you can get the body off part way so you can unplug it um, and then you know then it's so long in there when it's all together that it ends up dangling out the bottom um, what I'm probably going to do is uh, attach it to like a rubber band or something um, so that it can come out and flex down when I'm taking the body off but when I undo it it'll it'll retract itself and so yeah uh, another thing I noticed uh, putting on this body is that the the body posts don't line up real well with the body uh, we gotta kinda force it over the posts are too close together for this body for the body hole I mean they, you can get them on there it's, it's just uh, I, I guess I expect a little more from associated than, than something like that um, uh, people have been complaining about how thin and flimsy this body is it does feel thin um, and the the connection between the cab and the body uh, feels pretty flimsy as well like that so um, there there is that for me um, I actually like a really thin body because it uh, reduces the weight up top um, so you, I definitely don't want weight up here or because I'm, I'm more into uh, uh, capability than looks so I, you'll never see me with a roof rack um, out there if I'm, if I'm being serious about what I'm doing um, so yeah that's and that's just my preference and so um, there's nothing wrong with a roof rack and if you want to roll that way that's that's what makes you happy then yeah rock it so anyways I've got it plugged in so we got the lights on Woo! Um, they look pretty cool the um, uh, the lenses in here um, they do appear to be just stickers for the uh, the effect to make them look like lights um, it doesn't look bad either way I mean it, it is just a sticker which is you know, a little lower end than then, but it is, you know, a three hundred fifty dollar truck with a lot there, and so you know you've got to have some give and take at some point. I think this body's going to perform. I'm probably going to run it for quite a while before I change over to something else. Maybe a little weak on the servo, but it's you know it's it's an RTR servo. What what do you expect? If it lasts more than two days, I'll be happy. So my understanding is that it is the uh, set in the. Um, the 5.7 over percent overdrive um, I'm most likely gonna go to the what is it 11.83 or whatever it is I'm most likely gonna go to that but I'm gonna rock it this way for a while um, I need to figure out how I'm gonna get some axle weight I could just put weighted wheels in there but you know rotational weight and all that so let's see here Ooh, that is pretty smooth um, other than that little binding it's got in there um, and that binding could be just from how much how sloppy those drive shafts are might look into doing something different with that but it's you know a $350 truck so we, we can't be too hard on it but uh, it has it has in my mind a lot of potential 